Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the FS2004 Aviation Pro channel. Today we're going to review the Aerospool WT9 Dynamic. I haven't done a review for quite a long time, but I promised to review this aircraft in a previous video uh, that was featuring this aircraft uh, in the mountains of Innsbruck. But uh, now we'll uh, review this aircraft and first of all we're going to take a look at the exterior of the aircraft and then afterwards we'll take a look at the interior and the cockpit. As the airplane is made in Slovakia, there are quite a few Slovak liveries. And here's an example of a Czech livery. And here's an example of a Dutch livery, and as you can see it's a little bit different because this version is a retractable gear version. And it enables you to rise the gear after takeoff and also lower the gear before landing. So as you can see there are quite a few nice standard liveries available for this aircraft. We're now going to take a further look at the exterior model and it's very well modeled actually. Uh, we're going to take a look at the pilots, if you press shift 4 we have here a nice uh, menu where we can select different uh, pilots as you can see. So we have here a female pilot, we can also choose whether we want two uh, persons on board or even none, uh, no pilots on board like this. Which looks of course a bit stupid, but if, uh, if you are on the ground it makes you uh, gives you a realistic experience, you can really see that the aircraft is empty. But for now we will uh, just let one pilot fly this aircraft. So this is quite a nice function. Another tiny little detail you can see here is the vibrating engine compartment, and of course that gives a little bit more realism. But we're not done yet, there are a lot of more options available especially on the ground so let's switch the engine off for a little while and you will see that the pitot tubes will be covered as you can see here automatically so let's open the control panel again because there are a lot more options available for example we can detach the wings as you can see the nav lights and the strobe lights are still on but you should have turned them off anyway But for now we'll put the wings back on the aircraft and we can also cover the propeller blades and if we apply the parking brakes those little blocks in front of the wheels will appear as you can see here. We can uh, turn off and on the winglets as you can see. Uh, we can also remove the side window. And another little option is to show the luggage on the ground if we move to the other side you can see it here. Which can give a nice realistic experience of course. We can also remove the engine cowl, as you can see here, which gives you an, a nice view on the detailed engine. And we can also open our door, as you can see. And one little more thing is that we can um, remove the mirror you see uh, attached on the aircraft. And it's a little function. The mirror actually doesn't work, but we can remove it anyways. So here we can take a closer look at the engine compartment. As you can see it's very very detailed and it enables you to uh, yeah, simulate the inspection of your engine whenever you want to. So we're now going to take a look at the interior of this aircraft. We're going to take a look at the cockpit and all its systems and also some other features. One thing uh, about this add-on is that you can um, see the same details of the aircraft both from the external view and from the internal view. So if you walk around from the internal view you will still see all the de details of the external uh, model. So as you can see we have here our uh, luggage again and if you move to the other side we have a good uh, look at the cockpit right here. And you can see it's very well detailed together with seat belts and uh, seats. So of course we are able to uh, close our canopy from the inter internal view as well, so let's do that right now. And as you can see it closes very nicely, just like that. So now let's take a look at the, all the systems of the aircraft. Um, I'm going to go through it quickly. As you can see we have here a very nice uh, primary flight display. There's a lot of uh, good indications. The uh, s smoothness of the indications is quite good as well, and here we have a few knobs where we can modify our uh, display uh, so we can see for example the compass rows and we can adjust the uh, barometer uh, setting 
and a lot more but you can all find this information in the manual and we're gonna take a look at that later on another great thing uh, about this display is that we can view the uh, checklist from out the uh, primary flight display so you don't have to print anything you can just find it on this display as you can see so let's move over to the other uh, knobs on this panel we have here uh, a few lights which we can uh, easily switch on as you can see and this button over here is the tau gable winch uh, it actually doesn't work it's, it's used for the uh, disconnecting and enabling the autopilot and if we press shift 7 we uh, get here a nice uh, little feature that enables you to use this autopilot as you can see there we can adjust the altitude and heading and that kind of stuff if we press this button we can easily disconnect the uh, autopilot so there's no glider simulation provided with this add-on but at least you have a nice autopilot so you can enjoy the scenery around you furthermore we have here some uh, more standard instruments as you can see and if we move to the other side we're going to take a look at this uh, section of the aircraft we have here our uh, GPS display as you can see it gives you a nice representation of the uh, terrain around and uh, some other functions um, we'll just turn it back on you can see it needs to start up a few seconds and we can also adjust this compass roads over here for navigational use and there are a few more other buttons uh, available right here and also we have here our radio stack and also our transponder and here have a few uh, more engine uh, instruments so we can check if everything is going well with the uh, engine and here we have a few knobs I don't know if they actually work but we have a nice little list here that shows you what they are used for so let's move over to the pedestal and as you can see we have some uh, very nice joysticks right here uh, so you won't have a yoke on this aircraft but uh, we have here some uh, magneto switches our ignition switch to start the engines the fuel pump and the avionics the throttle of course uh, we have here our trim uh, handle also our parking brake and we have here our uh, flap lever and some other uh, things like the choke and the fuel pump switch and also the carburetor heat that kind of stuff that you would find on the conventional aircraft so once you've installed this add-on you will probably wonder where is the manual well actually it's not provided as a PDF but it's over here it's an interactive manual as you can see and we'll just go through it quickly it's very nice um, so let's just go to the first page and uh, as you can see it's made in Slovakia and well as you turn the pages you, you really have a nice sound effect of uh, page turning and yeah it gives a little nice um, effect to it and we have here some uh, specifications it's very detailed so uh, you will easily learn how to use this aircraft um, it also explains how all the panels work and uh, what all those switches are for of course I've not gone through it uh, in detail so you can all uh, find it in this beautiful manual so let's just skip through all these pages very very quickly um, as is to just give you a little view of what's all included And as you can see here we have a very nice detailed page which ex uh, explains you uh, all the engine compartments so you actually know what they are for. And we have lastly some uh, more information about the real aircraft and also some uh, personal experience from I think the developer. Um, and it gives you some uh, nice pictures and information and about the uh, line art creations add-ons that are also available and here we have uh, the old crew that made this uh, add-on and of course we want to thank them for making such an amazing add-on and then there's this page over here uh, it's very <laughs> yeah uh, unexpected actually that they provide that page in this manual but uh, I agree with it um, and I support it as well uh, do whatever you can do with it as you can see this add-on was made during the uh, events in Japan where a lot of people died and um, well, do whatever you can do with it. Um, 
whether you're a Christian or not, I am actually. So I hope you respect and also understand this spiritual message of uh, the developer. And thanks to him, we uh, can enjoy this add-on. And as you can see, that's the end of the manual. And we're going to take a look at the aircraft in action now. Because, of course, we want to take a look at how all the cockpit systems work during flight. So I'm just going to go really quickly through the engine start procedures. Make sure the throttle is about 10 to 20 percent. Uh, the choke right here must be fully in or in the on position. And, of course, the, uh, the nav lights right here must be on as well. So we're just going to move the ignition switch. There we go. The engine startup is complete. We'll move the throttle, throttle back to idle. We turn the avionics on and as you can see we have successfully started up our WT9 dynamic. So we're just going to take off this airplane now and we're going to take a closer look at all the systems while flying. Oh and now one more thing, don't brake too hard because this brake is very very sensitive as you can see here. As you can see we successfully took off from Poprad airport in Slovakia and we're now going to take a look, uh, closer look at the primary flight display. So as you can see the display works very smoothly, it might seem a bit more laggy because of course I had to record this video with fraps which always reduces the frame rate. And anyways, you now have a good view on all the indications of this primary flight display. So let's take another look at the exterior model of this aircraft. Um, as this aircraft is very very light, you have to be a bit careful with controls, because with little input you can really uh, turn very quickly. And of course it's also vulnerable for turbulence in the area, so make sure you don't uh, go flying with this thing in bad weather. Because you won't be... Um, they are very satisfied and happy as these two pilots. So just to summarize, I think this is a very nice add-on and very worth your money. I think you will have a great experience uh, when flying this aircraft, especially in VFR. In real, this aircraft is used for uh, how we glide us up into the air so uh, well actually we missed the glider uh, simulation but uh, that doesn't matter really much you will stay, still have a great flying experience in any VFR condition. So both the interior and exterior of the aircraft are very very nice uh, th there are a lot of animations available which will give you a realistic simulation experience of course it depends on how far you want to go with uh, simulation for example, this luggage outside of the aircraft, it's a little detail, but it gives you some nice uh, screenshots, of course, to make, and also video. So guys, thanks for watching the review of the Aerospool WT9 Dynamic made by Lionheart Creations, here on the FS2004 Aviation Pro channel. If you would like to see more content of this channel, please subscribe, and also running a VETSIM series at the moment. And... Uh, in the next few videos we're going to discuss VFR flying, so if you are interested, please take a look and subscribe. For now I'd like to thank you for watching, and please enjoy this little landing here of uh, the aircraft, and I hope to see you of course next time on the new video.